during the off season, the most dedicated storm chasers spend months preparing for springtime's severe weather. Testing out new camera gear, packing up and preparing for weeks on the road. Here's Daniel Shaw installing another communications antenna. Here's Skip Talbot assembling his prototype for the Tornado Observation, Analysis, and Detection Project, or TOAD. And here's me testing my new drone in the big city signal interference. from Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, I made it here. I left at 2 p.m. yesterday. There it is. For most storm chasers, the primary objective is witnessing and documenting a photogenic tornado. Hang on. My first tornado of the year was this rainy snake slithering through the mist. by seeking a rain-free view and dangerously positioning in a tornado's path. Some storm chasers seem hell-bent on raising the stakes. You're ruining my shot, guys. Really? April 23rd, storm chasers were treated to one of the most photogenic spectacles of the year. Nice. Still on the ground. I think it's time to roll. Let's pull over here next to Daniel for a second. The other side of this tornado, Blake Brown had a more chromatic view. Right in front of a rainbow. That's the first for me. Keep going. This EF2 was the strongest tornado of the family. It destroyed small barns and threw a pickup truck 100 meters. In all, this storm's five or six highly visible tornadoes grazed mostly upon open country. No fatalities were reported. Let's go down there. All right, we gotta go right up in there. We don't want to drive under that. That's gonna be the next tornado. Wild. Storm chasers often stumble upon fantastic colors in the sky, like this circumhorizontal arc, also called a fire rainbow. Other times, the vibrant colors are forecast and anticipated, like this lightning storm at Golden Hour.
Some chasers pause to appreciate other interesting storm features, like this distant storm's overshooting top. Because I paused to appreciate this overshooting top, I missed the storm's wild rope tornado. I just saw the funnel cloud. No, oh, really? I can see it from here and I'm still 20 miles away. Okay, bye. Bye. Oh, it's on the ground! <laughs> on the ground! Fortunately, Michael Binsky was on location to pick up the slack. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Spin up. Eventually, I arrived at the scene to marvel this low precipitation supercell. For two hours, chasers gawked at a UFO like mesocyclone twisting into changing light. Some chase for science, aiming to collect data that will help them untangle the tornado's mysteries. Gas station, quick stop. No way! <laughs> Headed by Dr. Anton Simon, our field operations team assembled again to gather our scientific contributions. We're having a tumbleweed race. Lubbock, Texas, another low precipitation supercell was ingesting and coughing up copious amounts of orange dust. Strong winds circulating around the storm's base veiled a developing tornado. In order to see the tornado, we attempted to punch through the dust storm, hoping for a clear view on the other side. Inside the surging belts of dust, the atmosphere felt less like Texas and more like Jupiter. dazzled onlookers through the sunset. And far into the AM hours, red sprites and green ghosts blossomed into the stars. They just keep coming. Oh my goodness. Big ghost, holy moly. This is the craziest sprites I've ever gotten. And there's a falling star just to add some awesomeness to it. Last night, one of the most amazing evenings of sprites today. I woke up late, but wanted to share a little treat with you guys that we just now found for Austin. The road, look at that. You guys know what that is, right? It's a big old, big old male bull snake. Look at that beautiful banded tail that he vibrates in the weeds. People think he's a a rattlesnake, because they're dumb. This guy was hanging out 
in an area that had been completely tilled up. It was just dirt as far as you could see. And he was just laying in the road. Somebody was gonna hit him. I was thinking to myself, you can do better than that. So we're gonna move you to some park where they don't till up the earth, but there's lots of ladies, ladies out there. Now there's a fly in here. Say goodbye to the beautiful bull snake. And hopefully I will have you guys some more goodies. Is it fly on my face now? Uh, see, see what one fly can do to your whole game plan? Got a funnel cloud, high base. Of course, the hail's coming. Toyotas. During COVID. <laughs> Storm chasers are no strangers to danger, but most of this danger arrives in the strangest of ways. A rogue bolt from the blue leaping miles away from a storm can strike with no warning. The army of other drivers out there can strike with no warning. Nice. Good job, dude. Or a random microburst suddenly tearing down the towering trees above. Oh, in thunderstorms, microbursts are powerful downdrafts slamming into the ground and spreading out in all directions. Driving into one can be as scary as driving into a hurricane, but much more brief. Rather than abandon their pets at home for weeks, some storm chasers bring their furry companions along for the ride. This is our lead pheasant chaser, Jody, and her energized sidekick, Chase. Jody was adopted in 2007 and became a devoted storm chaser soon after. This is Jody's 13th year chasing. Probably 50 to one edits for Jody. Yeah. Wow. You guys were at Campo in 2010. 10. 10? Yeah, pretty storm. Oh, <laughs> pretty storm. Probably yeah. Like you know, shrug. shrug. Yeah. <laughs> but the Campo tornado was one of those tornadoes that actually captured our dog Jody for the more than like a few seconds when she looked up and that big white funnel coming down, her eyes just gazed on it and she was just following it across the landscape. And then she went back to chewing her bone. Oh, there's Jody back there. Not you. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to film. Jody here. What? Jody, you <laughs> saw Campo and I didn't. 13 years of chasing storms, 50 tornadoes, countless priceless adventures, and gray hairs. In her lifetime, Jody got to experience more Tornado Alley majesty than most storm chasers ever will. We sure will miss her. Nice wide shot guys, anvil, towering cumulus, and popsible funnel cloud in there. From our far perspective, an SLC lowered right where a tornado should be. Public reports tornado. SLCs are often mistakenly reported as tornadoes. So what do you think? Is this a tornado or just an SLC? How's your 2021 season, dude? Uh, it's going okay. Yeah, what about you? It's been great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hanging in there. <laughs> wow. Some tornadoes are so weak and brief, it's difficult to tally them as tornadoes. Man, it wants to do it. Tornado on the ground, guys. Or not. Yeah, to me it looked like a brief tornado, um, and then it just got blasted by RFD. 
It's crazy to see a discreet cell like this in Kansas in May, not going tornado nuts. And then we've got these little tiny cells to the north <laughs> that have been tornado warned the whole time. Woo, another long day of storm chasing. Started off early and went all day long. That's been the case for the last eight days straight. Got some good storm structures, some okay lighting, some beautiful sprites, but all the tornadoes have been weak, tiny, dusty nipples. And again today, I think that's what we got is a weak, tiny, dusty nipple. And to celebrate, we're gonna have a half a taco and some Pop-Tarts. How's your uh, 2021 been? Uh, not too bad. It could be better, but <laughs> hopefully we'll change that today. Charles, how was your 2021 season? Uh, it's been going decent. We've seen quite a few tornadoes. <laughs> How was your 2021? It's honestly been not too bad now, now that I'm actually seeing cool stuff. 2021 season was very, very challenging. We drove around in circles a lot, and we kept continued to drive around in circles. Where are we again? I don't know. Pretty. With peak tornado season winding down and future targets becoming less and less apparent, dedicated storm chasers dispersed around the country in their search for more amazing weather. I returned to my hometown to check on the lightning and the lizards in my backyard. This is Dino, king of the garage. He got the scar on his face fighting with rival. This is Dino's sweetheart, Katie. Hey, Dino, you want another bug? Hmm? Come get it. The only thing Dino and Katie like better than big, free, juicy roaches is snuggling. I was documenting lightning storms in Southeast Texas. Daniel Shaw was documenting more gorgeous supercell structure in North Dakota. Here's the plan for today. Uh, today has all the promise of coffee and a styrofoam cup with powdered creamer. It's uh, not the best parameters in the world, but it's enough to get you out the door and on your way. That was what was just about to drive over you. This is a horny toad. Not me. I'm just a person. This is the horny toad. This is actually a horned lizard. And I bet if you have a big TV screen at home right now, my face is scaring your kids. When I was a kid, I saw my first horny toad. And I ran inside and said, there's a dinosaur out there. And it was the neatest thing I'd ever seen. I mean, look at how prehistoric this guy is. All right, we got to go to work. June 26, two storms smashing into each other cooked up a dusty Vortex sandwich. That wasn't me. 
Only the local horny toads dared get close enough to decipher if these vortices were big gust nados or small tornadoes. doing? You're causing a bunch of mischief, aren't you? Oh, get out of here, kitty. Kitty just wants to be part of the group, don't you? It's definitely the coolest place in town to be hanging out, isn't it? Well, in July, most of the tornado-only targeting chasers are done running around for the year, but a handful of transient luminous event photographers are just hitting their stride. We're having a yard sale today if you'd like to come by and purchase anything. We got stuff everywhere. You name it, we got it. It looks like Circuit City came over here and threw up. Yeah, I mean, if we can't get it with all this. <laughs> you know what? I'm feeling good. I think we're in a wicked spot to have a lot of opportunity from two different areas, so we can't ask for better than that, right? Yeah, how do you like that flashlight in your eyes? It's like, yeah, it's like an interrogation. <laughs> We're hearing all sorts of strange wild animal sounds out there. So if, if somebody finds this footage... Is he laughing? Is that <laughs> In August, some chasers head for the Sonoran Desert to try their hand with the scenic North American monsoon. Chasers in Arizona and New Mexico were striking the lightning jackpot. Melanie Metz was in Illinois, bagging a rare 2021 photogenic tornado. By the end of November, 2021 had tallied about average annual tornado reports and only 14 fatalities but it wasn't over yet. On the evening of December 10th and the dark AM hours of the 11th, a deadly tornado outbreak devastated portions of the Ohio and mid-Mississippi River valleys. In a horrifying darkness, multiple strong to violent, long-tracking tornadoes destroyed thousands of homes and businesses some of which were completely leveled or swept from their foundations. One long-lived supercell produced two EF4 tornadoes where Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, and Kentucky borders are in close proximity. Several media outlets prematurely hyped these tornadoes as one quad state tornado, inaccurately claiming the longest tornado ever recorded. The first EF-4 from the storm tracked 81 miles, killing seven people. With top wind speeds estimated at 190 miles per hour, the second tracked 165 miles, killing over 50 people. By sunrise on December 11th, 88 people had lost their lives. Four days later, a long-lived and fast-moving destructive windstorm called a derecho spawned a swarm of tornadoes in the upper Midwest. The highest rated were only EF2s, and no tornado-related fatalities were reported. A freak December finished off 2021 with an additional 200 tornadoes, more than April and June combined. In 2021, 1,376 tornadoes were confirmed, causing over 100 fatalities, the most tornado-related deaths we've seen in the U.S. since 2011. 
though it turned out to be an above average year in touchdowns, a continuing deficit of photogenic tornadoes seemed to inflate the reverence for nebulous, weak, and rain-wrapped funnels. Day five, still going. <laughs> Are you vaccinated? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, good. That's the right answer. For most of the storm chasers, the surplus of incredible storm structures, lightning, and atmospheric colors made chasing in 2021 well worth all the challenges. Till next time, friends. Happy trails. <laughs>